what happens with aluminium is it sticks onto the melts and sticks onto the tip of the tool like that. It's horrible stuff. I don't like machining it. It's not like not like really proper metal, so to speak. Maybe on a 41 mil hole. It will stop it. 38. Point five. Let's <coughs> creep on this nice and gradually. bit more accurate measuring this time. Right, so we've got a metering micrometer here and that is absolutely dead on 41 mil. See that on it, but it is 41, 41 mil. Yeah. Right, we're now back on the outside diameter, which needs to be 190. Ninety point nine three, so we're just another mill off. That's one ninety point one, so I don't go fans here now. Take the fun's hair off. Then she will find a same and bring it over to that size. I'm not sure I really need just making uh, but I'm gonna make it out of the size that he wants. So 
sorry, 189 point, 189 point nine, which is near enough. 190 mil. Okay, I need to shampoo that edge, shampoo that edge, turn it around, and then just machine the back of it off. It's a nice shampoo like that. It means if it gets dropped, it doesn't damage the corner too much. We'll do the same on the centre hole. I've got the compound slide set to 45 degrees as they put the chamfer on. Same with the outside one. I'm going to have a quick check of the dimensions before I take it out of the Out of the chuck. I've got enough there to get me 20 mil. That's a family's hair on that 190. And that is 41. So I can take out the chuck now, turn it round, machine the back off, and that's the job done. Right, so now that I'm going to chuck that way, I'll put some little bits of aluminium strip on there just to protect the protect the job and we'll machine, machine the back off and that's it, that's it done. Right, I've got some thin pieces of aluminium which will just give it enough so that we don't cause any damage with a chuck. Right, we'll clock this in. This is a quick, easy setup to get this running true. Obviously, the hole in the centre is running true, and all I've done is put a tape, I drill a chuck into there, I run a clock gauge on there, and I can clock it in that way. But the first thing I need to do is make sure that this is right home in the chuck. Touching the back of the, the four jaws, which it is. We'll bring the clock here, Jane. Right, hopefully you can see that. All you do is find the highest point, which is there. Tighten that jaw. Highest point again which is there, so if we loosen the opposite one off, it's the nudges, just the fannies, tighten that one, highest jaw again, which is that one, so if we loosen its opposite off, high jaw again, that one, Starting to get near now.
that's getting within within half a thou anyway. Right, then we'll deem that just about there. Quite a lot to come off the back of this. as well, as one side, place your fingers off, we're getting down the other side now, this will be the last rough and cut, and then we'll have a little bit clear around, see what sort of finish we're going to achieve. Right, it's now at 20.15, so one more little whispery cut is going to take us down to the 20 mil, I'll speed things up, slow the feed rate down, and just see what sort of finish I can get on this. Right, this is just the last cut. It's taking the 0.15 off now. Put a nice finish on as well. Still put a decent finish on. This is where saying Celia will start to speed up as it gets towards the middle of the cut just to keep the surface speed of the material the same but that's not doing too badly for a mechanic that pisses about Settle for that. Well, I've got to go down to size now, anyway. That's pretty spot on. 20 mil. Right, I need to readjust this corner. And put a radius in there as well. That's nice, that's it done. Keep these little bits of aluminium in a box. They'll always come in handy. Little packing pieces. You see we'll have a nose on. It's done no, no damage. And without the packing pieces, they would have done that to the job. Just a case now we're cleaning the lathe up, it's an absolute, absolute mess. But at least it's better than cast iron dust, what I would call clean muck. There's one more item of tool I bought. I bought a die grinder, a second hand die grinder. This one's made by Thor, it wasn't a lot of money, I think I paid £13 for it. 
in three or four pound postage. So I'd rather buy that, which I know is going to be a decent tool, is buy a 20 pound die grinder from China off eBay that won't last very long. I've had it on an at work, it works great. Uh, plenty of power, you'll see us using that quite a bit in the shop. Again, it's just time to see it. A massive thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, thanks for clicking the like button, and as always, a massive thanks for all the well wishes that are coming in towards my wife, Deb, and my dad. Absolutely fantastic. Thanks very much.